Twice a year, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service biologists at Hopper Mountain National Wildlife Refuge trap endangered California condors so that the birds can be examined, tested for lead, and have their transmitters and GPS units changed. To catch the largest birds in North America, biologists place an animal carcass in a large coop. Once condors enter the pen, they are trapped until biologists remove them for examination. After being caught, the birds are transported inside an adjacent building where a team of three people will handle each bird. For this summer's workups, the three-person teams are made up of service staff and volunteers from the Santa Barbara Zoo and National Wildlife Federation. For me, this was such a wonderful experience because, you know, you hear a lot of the bad news stories about wildlife, but to see a success story. So we were out with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and we were releasing some condors back to the wild after they were tested. And the, the thrill of seeing these guys soar off was amazing. The thrill of actually holding a condor, you know, one of the most endangered species we have in our country, and to see that a program's actually working was, was quite inspirational. The team will secure the condor's wings and feet as service staff change ID tags, transmitters, and GPS units, and take blood for lead testing. The blood is tested on site and results take only a few minutes. Lead poisoning is the number one cause of death for California condors, and the lead is most often ingested as the endangered birds feed on a carcass containing lead bullet fragments. If you use um, a lead bullet in your gun and you shoot, say, a deer, um, the, the lead metal is really soft and it fragments into sometimes thousands of tiny pieces. And so, so you hunt your deer, you take the meat that you want out of the field, and then you leave the rest behind. Well, the, the stuff you leave behind, the gut pile, is sometimes filled with that lead, and then our condors are scavengers, so they only feed on dead animals and carcasses. So they will feed upon that and a lot of times ingest the lead, and then um, their stomachs are very acidic, so they can digest the lead very quickly and it goes into their blood and then they have lead poisoning. Lead poisoning in condors can have both neurological and physical effects on the bird. If the condor does not receive medical attention, it can suffer weight loss, lethargy, blindness, crop stasis, and even death. One of the, the symptoms, the side effects of lead poisoning is crop stasis, so the birds can't digest any food. So they actually, they can have a crop that's full of food, but they'll be starving to death because they can't push that food through. So birds that have been uh, poisoned, they've come back with really high lead levels. They, we've had them um, fall off the, the top of the flight pin before. One bird last year fell off the flight pin. She was severely poisoned with lead. Other clinical signs to look for are just general lethargy, um, stress, the color of their urates can change. Um, sometimes they'll be sort of more solitary in the flight pen, whereas the other birds are sort of more together, more social. And we do, once we trap the birds in the flight pen, but before we work them up, we do monitor them very closely, just looking for those clinical signs. Any condor found to contain a lead level of over 35 micrograms per deciliter will be transported by the service for lead exposure treatment. Yeah, if they test over 35, then um, they're treated, and if the Fish and Wildlife Service transports uh, all those birds to the LA Zoo for, for treatment, and they get a, a treatment of calcium EDTA, which is, it's called chelation, and it helps uh, remove the lead from the blood system. Once at the zoo, the condor is x-rayed to determine the location and size of the lead fragment. The length of the treatment and duration of the bird's stay at the zoo depends on the bird's lead levels. After the zoo has determined a condor is fit for release, service biologists will return the bird back to the wild to once again soar over the California landscape.